So, uh, first of all, thank you and welcome you to this event. And I hope that uh, everyone uh, is is uh, is well and safe uh, in this uh, crisis uh, situation. Uh, before I go to the agenda, I would like to inform our participant that this session is being recorded, and the whole event will be uh, running in English. Uh, but we also enable interpreter function in case you prefer to listen in Khmer. To enable the uh, interpreter function, uh, well, you will see uh, the, the globe sign uh, at the uh, bottom of the Zoom screen. And uh, when you click there, uh, you will see two options, uh, one, uh, three options actually. One is off English and Khmer. So if you click off, then you will uh, hear uh, what uh, ever language that is uh, spoken during the session. Uh, if you pick English, you will hear the English, uh, uh, the natural voice and uh, interpretation in the case there are participants that speak Khmer. And if you speak, uh, you choose Khmer, uh, you will hear the uh, interpretation from English to Khmer. So uh, for this event, uh, uh, if uh, Poking, uh, could you uh, show the agenda? Okay, please allow me to uh, quickly run through the agenda that we have this morning. So to start off, we will hear a welcome remark from Ms. Uh, Pauline Thermesis, the UN resident uh, coordinator to Cambodia. Um, next, uh, we will uh, have the pleasure to hear a welcome remark from uh, Mr. Andreas Zerberg, deputy ambassador of the Australian embassy in Cambodia. And then we will uh, be delighted uh, to uh, receive opening remark from His Excellency De Puren and the Secretary of State of the Ministry of Economy and Finance. Um, the uh, main uh, part of the session uh, will be the presentation of the, uh, of, of the uh, social economic uh, assessment of the COVID-19 impact in Cambodia by Mr. Uh, Baslo Kandler, UNDP uh, Senior Economist Consultant. After the presentation, uh, we will move to um, uh, um, an insightful uh, panel discussion, uh, which will be moderated by uh, Mr. Ivan Gonzalez de Alba, UNDP Cambodia's country economist. Uh, I would like to inform a slight change uh, to the composition of the panelists uh, due to the fact that um, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Ex His Excellency Fan Lu from the uh, Garmin uh, Man Manufacturer Association who has to attend to an urgent matter today. So uh, in the panelist session, uh, we will be honored to hear different perspective uh, from uh, um, the government, uh, uh, so civil society, as well as UNDP um, uh, policy uh, specialist. So the, pan the, the panelists uh, that we will uh, uh, have today uh, uh, is, um, sorry, um, first is uh, Ms. Groinaren, Deputy Director General of the General Department of Policy, Ministry of Economy and Finance. Second, uh, we are delighted to have joined us today, uh, Ms. Tulin, Lim, uh, Country Director of Oxfam Cambodia, and uh, as well, Mr. Uh, George Gray Molina, Head of Strategic Engagement and Chief Economist of UNDP Bureau for Policy and Program Support. And then finally, um, uh, we will uh, uh, hear a closing remark of the event from Ms. Sonali Dayaratne, Deputy Resident Representative of uh, UNDP Cambodia. Um, before I give the floor to Ms. Pauline, I would like to provide a short introduction of this policy brief. This policy brief uh, was developed in close collaboration with the Ministry of Economy and Finance under the support from the Australian government. It was prepared by uh, Dr. Maslo Kandler, UNDP Senior Economist Consultant, Dr. Ivan uh, Gonzalez de Alba, UNDP Country Economist, um, Dr. Jan Barani Ut, uh, UNDP National Economist, and uh, Dr. Uh, Ong Cheng Pot, uh, Economist from the UN Resident Coordinator Office. Uh, this is done with the support of Ms. Uh, Jessica Johanna 
Chandra, uh, Mr. Ho Kim Kyu, and Mr. Sokema Srin. Uh, the policy brief greatly also benefited from a review by Ms. Alisa Chakar, incoming UNDP resident representative in Cambodia, and consultations with Ministry of Planning and other UN agencies and development partners. Next, uh, I, I have the pleasure to invite um, Ms. Uh, Pauline Thomasis to provide welcome remarks. Pauline, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Nuwon, and good morning uh, to everyone. Um, my respects to Excellency Tep Purin, Under Secretary of State, Ministry of Economy and Finance, um, uh, Andrea Subru, Deputy Ambassador, Australian Embassy in Cambodia, and I'm also pleased to see the presence of distinguished speakers from MEF, Ms. Kruina Rin, uh, Civil Society, Solin, uh, and senior officials from other key line ministries in the audience today. Excellency Boro, uh, welcome also for this, uh, to this uh, conversation and many other members of the Diplomatic Corps Development Partners. Uh, in, uh, IMF is also in the room. Um, so it is uh, really exciting to um, participate and um, be, be um, uh, in the room with all of you in the launch of this 2021 COVID-19 economic and social impact assessment in Cambodia, an integrated modeling approach. This policy brief uh, contributes to the ongoing discourse on analyzing the social economic consequences of the pandemic in Cambodia and consequently in the formulation of recovery policies. As Nuwon, the MC has already highlighted, the policy brief is one of the outputs of a long-standing collaboration um, between the UN development system, particularly led by our economic uh, technical team um, headed by UNDP and the Ministry of Economy and Finance. So I take this opportunity to convey my appreciation to the Ministry of Economy and uh, finance for this partnership. I'd like to jumpstart the discussions by highlighting three key findings from the assessments. And I know I may repeat what will be uh, given in the presentation, but I think it might be helpful just to, uh, to say why I'm highlighting this. First, uh, first message that I take away from the policy brief is a glimmer of hope. And I think prior to the official opening of this, we were talking about why we are hopeful. The Cambodia economy is likely to revert back to positive growth path this year. The baseline scenario shows that the economy is expected to achieve 2.3% growth, moving from a contraction of 3.1% from last year. The positive growth outlook is supported by the larger global economic uh, recovery and the gradual reopening of the Cambodian economy. And, and we recognize that this gradual reopening is only possible because of the impressive vaccination rate combined with the strong and adaptive non-pharmaceutical the public health measures that Cambodia has in combination put in place. Um, according to the UN report, uh, world economic situation and prospects, globally, the economy is projected to grow by 4.7% this year. Um, and the strong growth is expected to be driven uh, by United States and Europe. So the optimism is being driven from that side, but is significant for Cambodia because these are the two largest export markets. So combined with the commendable achievement of the royal government in the quick and wide vaccination of the population, uh, you have um, exceeded many targets. Um, it is Cambodia is well positioned to take advantage of markets that are reopening in the US and Europe. And it puts Cambodia on track for a stronger recovery in 2022. I think the good news here is also that the, the simulations demonstrate that unemployment and poverty are likely to improve this year. Um, poverty reduction uh, <laughs> is likely to improve this year because of positive GDP growth. And the expansion, this is important, the expansion of social protection and other stimulus packages in place. So the second message is uh, we do still need to remain cautious, even with the growth, good prospects for recovery, because many challenges uh, still lie ahead of us. We know that the recovery conditions remain fragile. There's a lot of uncertainty. 
It's a lot of complexity. And we also know that this virus is fast evolving. And there are, no, there are new vir variants here that may set us back to ground zero again. Uh, so the assessment uh, is telling us that the uh, growth is expected not to be, or re recovery is not as fast as we thought as in the beginning of the year. And the initial optimism has been dimmed by the new Delta variant. Um, so with, with more transmissibility, with more severity of the disease, we still face further disruptions in social and economic uh, uh, activity. We also remain cautious because the simulations confirm what we already tacitly know, that COVID-19 has disproportionately impacted on women. How the simulations show higher unemployment uh, for female workers because they, because they are uh, in higher numbers in the key sectors that are hardest hit, um, uh, tourism, hospitality, garments. Um, so the, they are the ones suffering most from this pandemic. So third, uh, we are confident, uh, as I mentioned, that Cambodia is on track for stronger recovery in 2022 because according to the simulations, the benefits of social protection measures and GDP growth, uh, unemployment and poverty reduction are significant, uh, significant to the extent of 0.4 percentage points. In other words, without social protection measures, GDP growth of 2.3% in our baseline scenario would actually drop to 1.9%. So we are also looking at how social protection measures cushion or contain the, de the deterioration in uh, poverty rates by 2.9%. This brings us to a strong recommendation um, to sustain, if not further expand, the economic stimulus and social protection packages next year, rather than pulling them out immediately at the early and maybe weak signals of positive growth. Social protection should be considered as an investment in saving lives and livelihoods, especially of the most vulnerable, and as an investment to stimulate a more inclusive and, um, and equitable recovery. Uh, ultimately, we believe that these investments will uh, lead to the aspirations of growth and resilience in the Economic Recovery Plan 2021-2023, and also contribute to the longer term vision of middle income status uh, and achievements of the CSDGs by 20, 2030. We also recommend highly that these recovery policies uh, strongly put a gender uh, responsive uh, lens in, in, in this, expand investments in human capital development as prerequisites to healthy, capable, and productive and inclusive uh, society. So we really are advocating here for investments, not only in social protection, which we would like you to protect uh, in universal health access, in better nutrition outcomes, and also for education and skills building for the 21st century. We all believe that these are investments and should be a critical part of the stimulus and continuing uh, package for recovery. So I close by actually raising the concern that I expect most of you, uh, particularly in MOF, are thinking of. How do we actually finance this ambitious agenda? Um, I think there are opportunities that we need to further uh, explore together and work together. And we believe that by working together to increase government's fiscal space and mobilize additional development financing, we could actually uh, build back better. So some of the ideas for consideration are developing secure pathways for debt financing, uh, reforming fiscal policies, such as increasing taxes on tobacco, alcohol, and gambling, the sin taxes. Um, and third, mobilizing uh, a more green financing, you know, such as what Cambodia already has in the Red Plus, and also uh, tap further the global vertical climate funds, among others. Um, the, 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 in the discussion, hopefully we can share some more of these ideas and elaborate. But I think the message really is, we congratulate the efforts. We 
like to see them continue and the UN will continue to support the royal government and the partners to build forward better from the pandemic and ensure that no one is left behind. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pauline, for your insightful remark. Um, we are delighted to hear uh, the emphasis uh, that you placed on the uh, impact of the COVID-19 crisis that also happens, uh, the, the extent of the impact uh, uh, is different also to uh, different groups of uh, Cambodian population. Mm -hmm. And also uh, your remarks around um, COVID-19 recovery options uh, in Cambodia, that also include how Cambodia can work towards uh, um, uh, increasing uh, financing and fiscal space. Um, so uh, next, I would like to invite uh, um, uh, Mr. Andrea from the, uh, uh, the uh, Deputy Ambassador of the Australian Embassy to provide a uh, welcome remark. Please, Andrea. Uh, thank you very much and, uh, and good morning uh, to everyone uh, at the outset. Also, uh, please allow me to uh, acknowledge the presence of uh, His Excellency Pep Piorin, Under Secretary of State, Ministry of Economy and Finance. Uh, good to see you again uh, twice this week uh, virtually, but uh, I'm sure one day we'll maybe meet in person. Uh, also, uh, Her Excellency Pauline Kamasis, uh, UN Resident Coordinator, uh, Somali Dairatni, Deputy Resident Representative UNDP, uh, and also I'd like to acknowledge the members of the, uh, the panel, uh, including Representative from the government, uh, Kruna Rin, civil society, uh, including Lim uh, uh, Solin from uh, Oxfam uh, and other members of the UN uh, system here and uh, the royal government of, of Cambodia and other, and other stakeholders. Um, it's great to be here uh, today. Uh, and on behalf of the Australian government, I'm very pleased to help open today's uh, workshop and virtual launch of the UNDP's new policy brief on economic and social impact of COVID-19 in Cambodia. I really thought that the remarks, uh, opening remarks provided by Pauline were, were excellent. Uh, and uh, I would have to agree with, uh, with everything that was said there uh, in, in those remarks. And I will try also to uh, add some uh, insights uh, from our perspective <clears throat> on, on the policy brief and, and what it means. Um, I think in these times, in these uncertain times, uh, the need for uh, data and analysis such as that contained within the policy brief is uh, virtually important for uh, the government, uh, the private sector, development partners such as us, um, to give us the insights to help understand the complex issues and develop the appropriate responses. Um, these, this information is, is even more important uh, during the pandemic where it is uh, difficult to find accurate and timely information. As we all know, over the last 18 months, Cambodia's economy has been hit hard by the shocks and the effects of the pandemic, which has put the development gains of recent years at risk. Fortunately, the Cambodian government's swift response, including the impressive vaccine rollout and the unprecedented social protection measures have prevented millions of Cambodians from falling into poverty and set up the country for recovery. And uh, I'd like to join uh, Pauline in congratulating the government of Cambodia uh, for these uh, very impressive and uh, ambitious policy responses, which have undoubtedly saved the lives and the livelihoods of thousands of Cambodians. So I think at this point, uh, we can ask ourselves, is the worst over? And uh, as Pauline said, uh, we have reason to be optimistic or, or perhaps hopeful, uh, but uh, perhaps it is, uh, there is still a degree of uh, uncertainty in what will happen. And certainly over the last few months, a couple of years, there have been occasions where we have looked into the future and, uh, and hoped for uh, uh, a stronger recovery uh, and out of the uh, health security uh, crisis, but have been met with uh, increased challenges. Um, the evolving health situation does threaten to 
uh, block a robust economic recovery. And of course, when we do get to the point where we are emerging from the crisis, it is possible that the previous drivers of economic growth in Cambodia may no longer be as effective as they once were. This is part of the reason why Australia has uh, developed a partnership with uh, uh, the UN system and UNDP with the Resilience Fund to aim to support Cambodia to respond to the socioeconomic needs of the pandemic. Uh, in addition to supporting the policy work we will discuss today, it's, we have also supported Ministry of Economy and Finance to design and implement the stimulus package uh, that address the needs of Cambodia's poorest, which has now provided, I think, more than 440 million to 2.6, $440 million to 2.6 million Cambodians for emergency support. Uh, and as I mentioned, this is quite unprecedented and uh, something I'd like to pass on my congratulations uh, again to the, to the government. Our support also aims to help initiate longer term reforms that will strengthen Cambodia's economic resilience and protect it from future shocks. Uh, this includes our e-commerce capacity building support for micro, small and medium sized enterprises to help them quickly move online so they can participate in Cambodia's booming digital economy. And these interventions would not have been as successful as they have been without their basis in solid evidence. Uh, this is why Australia and UNDP have provided tangible support to the Ministry of Economy and Finance to develop the capacity to use evidence-based economic policy modeling tools. We strongly believe <clears throat> that modeling and simulation exercises are one of the most effective tools to support governments to plan and promote discussions around potential policy options. And we are pleased that this assistance has helped MEF evaluate the impact of COVID-19 on growth, poverty, and employment trajectories to help shape the Cambodian government's response. And strengthened, importantly, the economic case for stimulus and social protection. We all know that uh, there is a, uh, a tight budget, uh, a limited budget, and a, and a tight fiscal environment. And, uh, uh, Pauline has uh, put, put forward already some options for, for financing. Uh, but as I think we will hear further this morning, uh, the results of the policy brief clearly demonstrate that an effective social protection system can reduce poverty and stimulate economic growth. The Cambodian government's rapid, well-targeted response, including the expansion of social care stimulus, has helped to stabilize the economic and social consequences of the pandemic. And this support has helped cushion an increase in unemployment from the contraction in tourism and construction, and has had a positive impact on the agriculture sector due to increased household consumption. But the results also show that further effort is required to reduce the disproportionate impact of the pandemic, particularly on female workers. Uh, and Pauline has explained a little bit already as to uh, why this has happened. And uh, I think we'll hear more in the discussions later on also why they have been hit hardest in terms of uh, losing jobs. Uh, but also the results show that there is greater need for other vulnerable groups, including people with disabilities, informal workers, and uh, more recently, uh, we can also uh, look at the situation of the returning migrants um, and other vulnerable groups who may not receive equal benefits in the short term as the economy recovers. Much of the focus of this response has been on reviving the productive sectors of the economy, but we must stress the importance of investing in Cambodia's human capital by investing in improving access to healthcare and education. And this is essential to preserve the impressive economic and poverty gains achieved in recent years. Without these investments, the gap in human capital will continue to widen and this will affect Cambodia's future economic productivity and competitiveness. 
an inclusive response that integrates social protection and investments in human capital will ensure a cohesive and sustainable recovery from COVID-19 and strengthen Cambodia's ability to respond to future challenges. Going forward, Australia's support through the Resilience Fund with UNDP will focus on supporting the government to increase access to social assistance and promote inclusive post-COVID economic recovery plans by addressing vulnerabilities and identifying new sources of economic growth. Uh, let me finish my remarks by congratulating UNDP and the Ministry of Economy and Finance for producing another valuable policy brief. We look forward to continuing our partnership to contribute and support Government of Cambodia's pandemic response. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andreas, for a very uh, comprehensive remark. I take note of uh, your points uh, very highly around uh, the values of uh, empirical evidences, uh, such as uh, the uh, assessment of the COVID-19 uh, socioeconomic impact assessment in Cambodia uh, uh, that we are launching today. Um, uh, for and, and the emphasis on the importance of uh, this evidence in terms of providing um, uh, policy support and multi-sectoral uh, responses, as well as uh, using that as the uh, base for the evaluation of the impact of those responses uh, and use that towards uh, informing uh, further investments, uh, such as in social protection. So uh, next, uh, I have the honor to invite uh, His Excellency De Puren, uh, Under Secretary of State of the Ministry of Economy and Finance, to provide his uh, opening remark at this event. Uh, Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dim <coughs> Nguyen. Uh, Ms. Pauline, Mr. Andreas, uh, Ms. Sona Lee and uh, distinguished panelists, excellencies, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Very good morning to everyone. This morning, actually, I'm very, very delighted to speak at this uh, disseminating meeting of the policy brief on 2021 COVID-19 economic and social impact assessment in Cambodia. I actually would like to recall that uh, last year, in October 2020, the UNDP has produced and launched the first economic and social impact assessment using country-specific CGE model and GTAP framework for Cambodia. And today we have an updated assessment for 2021. As with the first policy brief, this updated economic and social impact assessment would serve as a policy input to support the government of Cambodia in formulating responses to overcome the COVID-19 crisis and prepare ourselves for strong economic recovery and sustainable development. This study has provided an important assessment as the previous speakers has mentioned on the impact of the crisis on Cambodia's economy and its people. And in particular, the model simulation shows that without social protection stimulus, there would be a noticeable increase in the poverty in 2021 over the baseline scenario, as emphasized by Pauline in her remarks. <clears throat> this would help to inform the government decision to take timely action through targeted social assistance program and stimulus packages that would lead to positive socioeconomic outcome, particularly on GDP, employment, and poverty reduction. Indeed, the findings and recommendation from the assessment have reaffirmed the right policy direction of the government to safeguard our vulnerable groups from the COVID-19 crisis. In this regard, in order to mitigate the adverse impact, particularly maintain jobs, reduce income losses and interruption of business activities, and also to accelerate economic recovery, the government will implement the post-COVID-19 economic recovery plan with main focus not only on recovery, but also on building resiliency through economic diversification and improving competitiveness. This issue related to the diversification and competitiveness also highlighted in the policy brief that we are launching uh, this morning. In this connection, 
the government will undertake further structural reform to be able to fully benefit from the regional integration, such as RCEP and other multilateral and bilateral and bilateral trade agreements by aligning our domestic economy and industrial strategies to regional and global value chain activity. Now, let me also update the meeting on the 2020, uh, 2022 budget law, which will be endorsed soon. Our budget resources for 2022 have been rationalized towards health spending and social protection program. We continued focus on cash transfer via ID poor, cash for work, and other social support measures to ensure that our vulnerable groups would maintain their minimum living standard during the COVID-19 crisis. We would also maintain proper investment on infrastructure in order to prepare our economy for speedy recovery during the post-COVID-19 period. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I personally support the recommendation presented in this updated economic and social impact assessment. In, in particular, I want to re-emphasize that one of the important lessons we have learned from the COVID-19 crisis is that proper social protection system is very critical to cushion social economic impact on poor people. And going forward, this social protection system needs to be sustainable <clears throat> and adapting dynamic targeting mechanism, including more targeting on gender, as uh, Ms. Uh, Pauline mentioned in her remarks as well. At the same time, this crisis also stresses that the poverty is a multidimensional issue. Thus, we need to look at the poverty from a broader perspective, not only from income viewpoint, but also from the perspective of equal opportunities. And as uh, uh, the deputy ambassador mentioned, in terms of equal opportunities, in terms of access to quality healthcare, access to good education, and could be access to affordable financing, at the same time, in our fast changing world, an access to digital ecosystem would be also very important to reduce poverty and to narrow inequality in the future while we're still living with the COVID. Before ending, I would like to note that in order to overcome COVID-19 and to recover from this crisis, we would require effective effort from all stakeholders. Therefore, I am confident that Cambodia would need continued support from the UNDP and other development partners in terms of ideas and assistance to help us to formulate policy strategies to achieve sustainable economic recovery and shared development. Once again, I would like to take this opportunity to extend my appreciation to the UNDP and the Australian Embassy on ongoing engagement with the Ministry of Economic and Finance on various analytical works and capacity building programs. I am confident that we will continue this fruitful engagement and cooperation to help Cambodia to strengthen institutional capacity and to work and to overcome its development challenges. On this note, I'd like to wish all the participants substantive discussions and good health during this challenging time. Thank you very much. Over to the organizer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Excellency, for your insightful remark. Uh, we are very pleased uh, to hear uh, uh, your remarks around the direct, direct contribution of this assessment and the policy brief in terms of uh, informing the government's uh, COVID-19 uh, response and recovery, as well as uh, towards building the resilience of the economy in the longer term. So um, next, uh, um, uh, we, we are now moving to um, a very uh, insightful uh, session. I would like to invite uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Maslow Kandler uh, to provide uh, the presentation and on the key findings of the policy brief. Maslow, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Um, His Excellency, Te Peron, um, Pauline Temelsi, UNDP Resident Coordinator, um, Deputy Ambassador Andrew Jerur and Sonali, uh, Deputy uh, of UNDP, colleagues from UNDP, panelists, and also participants. Very good morning. And I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, and um, I'm honored to get this opportunity to, to present uh, briefly the policy brief that we have done um, or conducted with uh, UNDP colleagues and also with the help from 
uh, MBF. So let me, I will use my slides. So that I hope I, I can share my slides. So I hope you, all of you can see my slides. Can you all see my slides? Okay. So basically, um, I think a lot of things have been already uh, been discussed by Pauline, um, Andreas, and Tepir, and all of these are very excellent points, and um, this also helped me, or actually supports uh, our findings uh, um, to be more focused. So I think we joined the MEF last year, and we had an ongoing collaboration, and last year we thought that uh, we could use the, uh, the system that has been developed under the uh, ages of uh, UNDP and EMEA uh, that we can use for uh, uh, assessing the, the, uh, the COVID-19 impact, not only from the economic point of view, but also looking beyond the economy and looking into employment and poverty issue. And uh, as Peron has said that we published the policy brief in somewhere in September, October last year, and at that point, we actually provided some estimates of uh, growth impact, employment effect, and poverty effect. And we were pleased to see that, I think the, when the final um, assessment were published by uh, Royal Government of Cambodia authorities, namely uh, MEF, we found that they're very close. Actually, we, we actually uh, simulated that the, the growth would be minus 0.33%, and then the final estimates were minus 0.31 percent. They were very close in that respect. So that gives us some confidence that uh, the system is quite robust and we always try to maintain the system with new data and you will see that we have updated the, the main data set for the uh, country CG model, the social accounting matrix, which is start with 2014 data. We actually updated, partial updated with new GDP estimation for 2022. But we could have done better, like uh, we were in discussion with colleagues in UNDP that some of the gender aspects should be included in the for, I mean, forthcoming SAM if, if we want to uh, build uh, a new SAM for like 2021 or 2020. So this year, this is the continuation of the collaboration and that this year we are also, I think, use the same framework but with some updates to assess or simulate what could be the pathways. Last year, we were actually counting costs this year, we are exploring the pathways to recovery. What should be the growth recovery? At the, at the beginning of the, and we started discussion with uh, MEF colleagues at the beginning of this year. And initially, there were more optimistic um, outlook. I think the, based on the global optimism of the early, um, early, like early first quarter of uh, 2021 with vaccination uh, rate and also opening up of economy. And we did not actually, um, I mean, anticipate that there will be a, Delta variant coming soon, and that the the early optimism will be marred by that the the uh, I think the uh, onslaught of the Delta variant. So the early optimism were dented by the onslaught, and then quickly uh, the global uh, system, multilateral agencies, including the governments, has revised their growth estimates. But before going to that, uh, the we use the even, even, uh, I think the integrated modeling system for this year simulation. But we have, as I said, we have updated this one. Uh, we, uh, we updated the social accounting matrix uh, using the 2020 sectoral GDP growth provided by the EMEA. We use the poverty model using the CSES 2019 information. And also, um, I think we explore and, uh, and uh, reviewed and talked to different people to design our, uh, like the simulation. Uh, and the simulations are based on certain assumptions. The assumptions were discussed with MEF colleagues and also checked with the data, uh, country information, global data set. And we came up with some, um, I, I think the uh, I think assumption on the basis of that assumption, we developed the scenarios. Okay. Now, the global growth outlook and vaccination rate has serious implication um, in terms of what uh, the, the, the world could achieve in 2021. But the, there, there will be a lot of variation in terms of growth across countries. Uh, as I said, uh, at the beginning of uh, like uh, this year, I think the UN system produced an excellent report trying to see that what could be the growth uh, prospect for 2021. And they, and they came up with like the early estimation what the growth could be, global growth could be 0.4.7% from the negative growth of 4. 4. minus 4.3% of the 2021. 
But the early optimism was gentle, and then uh, they tried to actually link uh, the, the growth uh, of the recovery scenario with the uh, progress of vaccination rate. And you can see that on the, the left-hand side graphs that shows that the, the world with uh, above median vaccination rate could achieve 2% GDP growth rate, but below vaccination rate could hardly achieve a positive growth rate, but it will be around 0.4% of GDP. And you can see that in advanced country also, the difference between uh, countries with above um, median vaccination rate will be around 2.5% or close to more than 2.5%, but the country below median vaccination rate will be uh, close to 1% uh, GDP growth. And for the emerging economy, you can see that this could, re I mean, even be negative for 2021. So this is an important, um, I think, the analysis and lesson that uh, is for Cambodia also. And I tried to look into the global data. I think I downloaded all the countries' data, like 220 countries plus 220 data. And I found that this was uh, related to June 2021. And I found that the medium vaccination rate was around 16% only at that point. So, and you can see that the, the progress of uh, vaccination in Cambodia is very impressive. The country is poised to actually uh, vaccinate uh, more than 80% of the uh, people who were 18, age 18 and above in, uh, in September. And, and, and Pauline has also given an excellent overview of what else other uh, has been done by the Royal Government of Cambodia to ease or support, and which was also, uh, I think, echoed by uh, the deputy governor, uh, sorry, deputy ambassador, that in terms of the support that the royal government has provided to save lives and livelihood, which are very encouraging and also, uh, I think, encouraging to move forward. So having said that, uh, moving forward, as we said that, we have used this uh, integrated city, uh, integrated economic system, but it's not only an economic system, it, it is beyond that. I think. Um, the system that we have developed with the help of MEF, uh, MEF is that it looks into GDP growth, it looks into employment using an employment module, and also go beyond to look into the distribution and poverty module. So that is the, I think, the two added advantages that we have in this framework. And then use, we are using this framework, we have also used for this year, and we must also acknowledge that we are providing some uh, capacity building training to officials of MEF, and which we are very uh, help, uh, I mean, like um, we have been doing that and uh, the support of MEF. Um, and then we, in this scenario, uh, in this simulation, uh, in this report policy view, we actually um, use, consider two scenario. Uh, we, both of the scenario have uh, social protection stimulus with and without, and we are calling it baseline scenario and moderate scenario. So basically we have four scenario. The baseline with social protection, baseline without social protection, moderate scenario with social protection, and moderate scenario without social protection, just to see that what is the role of social protection uh, in particular, in terms of to understand the role of social protection and put it up front to the policymaker to uh, take it seriously. I mean, I, we have uh, heard from um, Peron that they are taking it seriously. And also, uh, I think the the in the policy, uh, I think the policy making um, sphere, it is considered as a as an instrument to move forward. So, and then uh, we this scenario are based on some uh, assumption or impact channel. And and briefly, we are providing this impact channel in the policy deed that has been provided in more more detail uh, explanation. So we we assume that starting with agriculture. We assume that the agricultural growth will be around 1% under both scenarios, and this is equivalent to export demand of agriculture of 20% in 2021. We found that we also assume that on the basis of the global reopening of US and European economy, I think the garments, including textile, food, fire, travel goods, could see an export demand increase of 5% under the Bayesian scenario, but it could actually drop a two percent just point in the moderate scenario. So in the moderate scenario, we are assuming that the growth export demand growth in RMG plus sector could be around three percent. Non-RMG export sector actually uh, it possibly will enjoy a, a, a larger growth in their export and it could range from six percent to thirty percent by different sectors. And we assume that this would remain also same in the moderate uh, scenario. Tourism sector still continue to, um, I think, suffer. 
And we, we found that both the domestic input, including the, both the domestic and international tourist uh, arrival in Cambodia on the basis of the data, we assume that uh, this could be around 58% uh, reduction in, 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 the, in the baseline scenario, but it could drop further to 64% in the moderate scenario. So these are the sector, RMG and tourism are also sector where a significant number of female workers actually works and they would be affected by this uh, reduction uh, still in the tourism sector. The transport sector, which is slightly linked to the economic activity and also linked to the tourism activity, could see 1% uh, output increase in 2020 uh, in the baseline scenario and 0.5% uh, in output scenario. On top of that, we also added the lockdown effects. And the lockdown, uh, in the baseline scenario, we had three weeks of large lockdown beginning of this year and plus two weeks of lockdown on eight provinces. We assume that the lockdown are same for both the baseline scenario and, and also moderate scenario. In terms of stimulus package, we know that there's a headline stimulus provided by the government, social protection at 564 million, small medium enterprise financing facility at 150 million, and health respond, uh, response at 740 million. We did not include the health response stimulus into our uh, simulation because we thought that these are will be used mainly for imported goods like this is a leakage from the country in terms of uh, uh, I mean procuring vaccination and PPE other materials in that way. So these are the two uh, two scenarios and the assumption behind these two scenarios. I, I think these these are um, elaborated in the policy brief and we we request you to who are interested to actually refer to the policy brief for further details. The results, we will provide the results under three broad heading, the growth outlook, employment outlook, and poverty outlook. As Pauline and uh, other colleagues have said, um, the panelists have said already that last year, uh, the growth rate was negative, minus 3.1% of GDP compared to 2019, when the growth rate was 6.5%. But possibly this year, hopefully, if everything remains uh, fine, um, uh, the remaining months of the fiscal year, I think the Cambodia will uh, will return to a, a positive growth zone in 2021. The GDP growth rate may vary from 1.7% under the moderate scenario to 2.3% under the uh, under the baseline scenario with the social protection uh, stimulus in place. That is important to understand. Without social protection stimulus, the growth may range from 1.3% under the moderate scenario to 1.9% under the baseline scenario. The, the impact of social protection, we have found that is around 0.4 percentage point between the two uh, baseline and non, uh, sorry, this scenario with stimulus, uh, social protection stimulus and scenario without social protection stimulus. So, and we also seen in terms of the major like sectors, and you can see that the sectoral growth rate uh, will be positive for agriculture, will be positive for um, uh, industry, but still could be negative for like services, both uh, except in the one simulation where the baseline simulation with social protection, we could, we could I think possibly see a positive growth of a service sector. In other scenario, um, we, we would possibly will see that uh, service sector will still have negative growth rate in 2021. But uh, the, because of the positive growth of agriculture and industry, we will have positive growth trend under all these scenarios. So this is what we also found from the sectoral uh, side. Employment outlook, see, again positive. Uh, important issue is that we estimated that the last year the employment, uh, unemployment could jump from around 0.7 percent. Cambodia was almost at the full employment level in according to the latest CSS 2017 information. The unemployment rate very small, like uh, uh, less than one, I think around 0.5 or 0.7 percent. Then it jumps to 4.3 percent in 2020 because of the, um, uh, the the negative growth rate. Um, and then, but again, with positive growth rate, uh, it, it may come into the uh, it, it may drop further to 2.9 percent um, under the baseline scenario with social protection. And uh, without social protection, it could be around. 3.5 percent uh, under the baseline scenario. In the moderate scenario, it could range from 3.5 to close to 4 percent, uh, almost close to 2020 information. But all 
Overall, we expect that um, unemployment could drop by 1.4 percentage point in 2021 compared to like 2020 information. One, we also seen, which has also uh, elaborated by Pauline, uh, that um, on the gender front, we may still find that um, the female were disproportionately affected. Uh, it, it has been um, globally. It is not Cambodia specific. If, if you look at global reports of ILO and other, you will find that um, I, I think the female workers were mostly affected, uh, more disproportionately affected compared to the male worker. And they actually left the uh, one of the major, uh, I think, uh, what is some situation with gen, uh, female worker is that they have left the uh, labor force and become inactive in terms of not looking for employment anymore. So that is a worrisome development globally, but we are not entirely sure that is the case in, in Cambodia. But what we found from this simulation that the, the employment effect, unemployment effect will be relatively higher on female worker. And also in the recovery scenario, they, are, they will have less unemployment, but their unemployment uh, reduction will be smaller compared to the fame, uh, uh, Male unemployment point. This point to the uh, point. Two things. One is that we could actually add up gender responsive social protection system and also support the sectors like the RMG and tourism sector, which are mainly uh, female intensive in, in that way. So we need to go beyond. Like we need to also see some sector specific intervention to at least support the uh, female workers returning to uh, pre-COVID unemployment rate. Poverty outlook, excellent poverty outlook with social protection. We know that these are direct transfer to poor household. And we found from the latest report from uh, government of Cambodia, mainly Minister of Planning, that um, the targeting is quite uh, robust in Cambodia. And, and on the basis of that, we found that if this is the case, that the social protection will have significant effect on poverty impact. And we found that uh, the poverty impact could range between 11.5% to 12.5% under the baseline scenario with social protection and the moderate scenario with social protection compared to the, uh, the, uh, the scenario with the base and uh, uh, with, with not in without the social protection, the difference is almost three percentage point. So we will we will reduce. I mean the poverty reduction will be three percentage point more if we include the social protection intervention compared to a scenario without the social protection intervention. That is a critical, important uh, number to remember that three percentage point additional reduction in uh, poverty uh, when we include social protection in our, uh, uh, in our uh, I think, policy uh, scenario or policy making in that way. Uh, both consumption and poverty rates improved under the recovery scenario compared to 2021. But as we have said, the impacts are much larger under the recovery scenario with social protection. So these are the critical uh, under the three uh, uh, under the three broad headings. The critical findings uh, came from this policy scenario, which are elaborated more in the uh, policy brief. Uh, finally, we came up with some policy recommendation under two broad heads: one under the social protection head, another under the sectoral uh, head. Uh, what are the social protection? One is that. We need to strengthen, and the Royal Government of Cambodia can actually strengthen, adapt, and expand the policies toward achieving universal access to social protection, um, protection and promoting a more inclusive, resilient, and sustainable society and economy while recognizing uh, the fiscal space and macroeconomic stability. And also, you need to make the efficient uh, use of resources, harmonizing intervention, innovation and acceler accelerating digitalization, uh, possibly due to payment, financial inclusion, those, those uh, instruments. Second, adapt a preventive and shock responsive social protection system to respond to climate risk and other disaster, including health measure to contain the COVID-19 impact. Third point, which has already been discussed and alluded is that uh, there is a need to develop because of the impacts on uh, on gender are disproportionately high. We found that during COVID-19, we need to see, we need to uh, also develop a roadmap for gender responsive social protection system. Mainstream the gender across current program, promote specific policies for women and girls, given uh, that the impacts are were higher, are still on high on women and girls. Uh, another point, adapt a multi-dimensional pers perspective 
on progress that goes beyond income, which also alluded by the panelists before me to address the multiple sources of deprivation and that limits people's ability to thrive and remain out of poverty. i like to add with another one of that, possibly we need to adapt a life cycle approach to social protection and also in, in addition to the approach that basically looking into uh, providing poor relief at this stage. In addition to uh, the social protection uh, measures, Cambodia may, might also look, uh, consider the following measures. Support depressed income and employment generating economic sector, possibly tourism, to recover faster, in particular tourism, consider reopening borders to vaccinated tourists while implementing safe visitor schemes. This has been done in other countries also, but Cambodia can actually uh, look into the other countries who have done that already. Prioritize trade diversification and competitiveness, moving to new and green, new, uh, green market value chains, both in terms of product and both in terms of different uh, countries. In that way. Finally, consider a pro-growth growth policy measure that could include increased risk in from public investment in local economic production. Um, with that, I'd like to conclude and I'd like to thank everyone for their patience and hearing my uh, presentation. Thank you so much. Over to the organizer. Thank you, uh, Maslow, uh, for your elaborative uh, presentation. It is, uh, there are indeed a lot of insights uh, for the participants to take forward uh, from this event. Um, there is uh, one uh, question uh, from the audience. So, um, Maslow, I'm not sure uh, you would like to respond to this. Baslo? Pardon? Uh, there is the questions uh, from the audience around um, uh, the, the, the uh, vaccination. Why this should we vaccinated. should we do that at this point or later on? Okay. Um, I think we could take the questions and at the, at the towards the end we can uh, possibly. Okay, sure. Yes, uh, we can do that. Um, we also have uh, clinical teams behind the ground, so uh, uh, there is also possibility that we respond through the chat uh, for us to, um, to save the time. Thank you. So, uh, our colleagues, uh, um, uh, let me now um, uh, turn to the next session, uh, which is uh, the panel discussion. Um, so, for this, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Uh, Ivan Gonzalez de Alba to moderate the session. Thank you. Ivan, sorry, uh, the voice is not very clear, so uh, perhaps you could pull the, the microphone closer. Okay. Perhaps you can, uh, can you hear me better now? It's clearer oh. now, yes. Excellent. So uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone. And uh, just perhaps if we have questions from the audience, um, and uh, perhaps Basil can start uh, typing the, the question because we have limited time for the panel discussion. And uh, uh, so I'd like to give the chance to our panelists to give us uh, uh, their view on the, on the policy brief that we have presented today, but also on some of the policy recommendations and the, the, the national and the, in the international context. So let me, uh, I have a couple of questions and uh, let me perhaps start uh, with the, Ms. Kruminarin. Uh, um, so basically, uh, uh, we are back into positive growth locally, and uh, which is very news for the economy and uh, for the economic recovery of Cambodia and, and from, from recovering from this uh, COVID-19 impacts. So um, 
I think uh, Excellency Deputy Yurin already mentioned a, a few of the of the actions that the, the government is uh, considering on implementation from structural reforms, uh, industrial policies, uh, contemplating the social protection in the next budget. Uh, but then from your point of view, uh, perhaps you can expand a little bit. What should be the next steps for Cambodia to recover uh, and as well to build the stronger resilience? Um, do you see any challenges, opportunities for Cambodia? Please go ahead. Thank you so much, Dr. Ivan, for this very important Sorry, sorry, we cannot hear nothing. Narin, can, can you hear us? From the contracting of last year to I think we lost her. Okay, perhaps while we try to, to give her a chance to reconnect, let me go uh, then to, to Solin Lim. Uh, 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 I, I have another question for you. Uh, uh, according to these model results, unemployment and poverty rates are lower this year than, than, than the last one although they are still higher to the pandemic levels, pre-pandemic levels, uh, uh, co even considering the social protection and other uh, economic stimulus that have been implemented. It, the, the impact, for example, on poverty rate, we have seen that is between 2.6 and 2.9 percentage points. Uh, for example, I think this is actually very good news in terms of the, the impact of, uh, of social protection and other economic uh, stimulus that have been implemented. Uh, is this good evidence of the relevance of social protection? And what would be your advice in terms of uh, sustaining or even expanding the social protection system in Cambodia? Sure, thank you, Ivan. Thank you for having me. Uh, the quick answer is yes. Uh, the royal government decision to double down her investment on building social protection system, uh, as well as uh, other economic stimulus is working very well, I can see that. Um, according to Oxfam research, uh, we've seen that countries that have robust investment social protection system, um, you know, the investment that they've made prior to the strike of this pandemic, uh, those countries are doing better when it comes to coping, both coping and managing the um, economic recovery. Um, as Her Excellency Pauline has laid out in terms of potential financing options, uh, for, um, I, I wanted to, to come in and, and, and complement a bit further from citizen perspective. Cambodian people and businesses have gained a lot of understanding, Ivan, about their, uh, their responsibility to pay taxes. And I believe their mindsets too are shifting, slowly, but shifting, especially their expectation related to their, their tax obligation. So a strong social protection program that encompass of uh, strong social assistance, uh, social security, uh, areas of skill gap development and employment protection, as well as universal health care, will incentivize them to do their part on being good citizens and being good businesses. And to this point, I think it is as crucially important that all of us promote safe spaces for social dialogues on social protection. 
the other point I want to share is that uh, Cambodia is an exemplary poverty alleviation model that other nations uh, are looking up to. So it is important that we protect this successful legacy by investing seriously toward a universal social protection system as to ensure um, that millions, the millions that have been lifted out of extreme poverty will not fall back and to protect our successful businesses at the same time. Protecting my businesses here, my I would put emphasis on micro, small and medium enterprises because at this stage of Cambodia's phase of development, uh, 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 we all know that MSME are here to stay and 85%, 87.5% of Cambodia economy now is informal and we know it's the backbone of the, of the country. So a comprehensive social security program that will address what I mentioned early on, education and skill gaps, as well as making sure that the environment for businesses to operate is enabled is really key to not just building strong economic recovery, but also more importantly, uh, it can build Cambodia's resilience to the point of His Excellency Deputy Yurin. It builds Cambodia's resilience and prepare her for future shocks come what may. Over to you, Ivan. Excellent. Thank you so much for your uh, I think uh, we start to have some takeaways from, from, from these lessons uh, in terms of uh, uh, expanding social protection and uh, accompany this with uh, perhaps uh, a responsibility from the, from the population to pay taxes, but also in, in terms of uh, preventing uh, or implementing measures to prevent people from sliding back in, into, into poverty. Thank you so much. Uh, let me ask, uh, uh, I, I still don't see Karina uh, Rin in the in available, but so I will go with, uh, with uh, our other panelists uh, uh, here. Uh, is, she, is she there? Oh, okay. Uh, morning, George, let, let me just uh, go quickly with Karina uh, Rin just to, to check if she can actually uh, provide the response. Good morning. Good morning. Did you hear me uh, now, Dr. By the way, did you hear my, my question or should I repeat it? I I did hear your all your discussion with uh, Ms. Solin, but because there was an electricity cut in my area, so now I'm trying to use my mobile data. So apology for not turning on the video in order to maintain the stability of my voice. Um, yeah, uh, I actually, uh, with regard to the question that you have for me, well, uh, we actually uh, have uh, sort on the same page that after the contracted growth last year, we this year uh, tend to have the po the growth seem to return back to its positive growth path. And even though Cambodia is still fighting against COVID-19. And this um, uh, positive growth also uh, is being cautious with the uncertainties around that. Uh, like um, uh, Ms. Pauline, as well as Dr. Basu had mentioned. However, we note that this growth prospect has actually taken into account two aspects. And without this, uh, probably it could even turn even worse uh, based on the result of the study of the UNDP. And the MEF would feel the same thing. We value the importance of the social protection system that have all those vulnerable people and the two aspects that I have mentioned here is like, one is the government crisis response to stabilize the economy by protecting people's life, maintaining livelihood of the poor and vulnerable people, supporting hard hit businesses in prioritized sector to stay afloat and to stimulate economic activities through implementing a total of nine round intervention measures by providing tax exemption and low interest rate financing to the most affected sectors cash transfer to the poor and vulnerable household, and skill upgrading and retraining to the affected sectors, cash for work to create jobs for people and wage subsidy for the affected worker who are suspended uh, because of the impact of COVID-19. And the second aspect that I would like to emphasize is of course the remarkable progress of the vaccine rollout. And I may not mention more 
because our speaker have uh, mentioned a lot already about this. But I would like to add just one uh, little point here on the more effectively targeted containment measure under the new arrangement by the government. So it is important to be the two main uh, pillar uh, for allowing the economy to further getting back on track. And uh, we, of course, with this, uh, Cambodia is expected to achieve the herd immunity by November this year. So for the next step to support the recovery, as well as to build stronger economic resilience, Cambodia is going to launch the post-COVID economic recovery plan 21-2023, as uh, uh, mentioned already by uh, our His Excellency Epiuren. And here we focus, the plan focus on the three R approach. One is the recovery, uh, second is reform, and the third one is resilience. So on the recovery front, uh, the plan aim to ensure stabilization and socioeconomic restoration through strengthening public health and safety, providing financing to private sectors, implementing fiscal policy to promote key sectors, enhancing the implementation of free trade agreement and promoting a uh, public-private partnership uh, framework. I, I believe uh, you all have uh, felt already uh, some of this um, uh, policy support uh, happening the, uh, this year and will be also moving forward depending on the situation of the COVID-19. So on the uh, reform angle, as His Excellency and the Secretary of State has already mentioned, here I just would like to emphasize a little bit more on how to promote diversification and competitiveness. Because here we uh, focus on strengthening governance services of general department of taxation and general department of custom and exercise, strengthening uh, electricity sector by providing cheaper electricity costs to business, uh, the factory for the production, improving ease of doing business and enhancing a lot of uh, transportation and logistics for better uh, investment climate and uh, cheaper cost of production um, for both domestic supply as well as the uh, export purpose. So the, the third or we basically focus here is to be resilient of the economy by accelerating inclusiveness and sustainability through promoting digitalization, uh, enhancing SME, promoting skill for better human capital investment, developing comprehensive, inclusive, as well as gender response or self protection system, and a build, building a resilient health system to well respond to crisis as well as adopting a green recovery. So here I may not uh, go into the detail of the uh, uh, H main policy support, but I would welcome if there is any question around that. So from this uh, recovery plan, we do see some challenges in terms of increasing uh, spending need, while of course uh, revenue that, uh, shortfall is expected. So we are working hard and trying to balance well between the short-term support and the long-term fiscal sustainability. So with this challenge, uh, we actually also seeing some opportunity going forward by taking this crisis as an opportunity for us to you know, um, uh, better uh, go for a deeper reforms and strengthening capacity of the public institution to be cleaner, smarter, and stronger. So to be specific, the committee could em embrace the opportunity to standardize and systematize the social protection system, build a resilient health system to well respond to crisis, reduce reliance on traditional sources of growth while gradually moving towards skill-based or tax-based industry, promote digital transformation to reap the benefit of this industrial revolution and to well adapt to the new normal ways of life, as well as promote green economy for Cambodia's sustainable development. Okay, so I, I may end my um, uh, response here and I would welcome if you have uh, more questions or clarification. Dr. Ivan. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, this is very useful. Thank you for sharing the, the the economic recovery plan and the three elements, like the three at least the three pillars in terms of recovery, reform, and resilience. I, I find it uh, actually 
very adequate for uh, for the context that we are in the in this uh, dealing with the pandemic, etc. No? Uh, let me go quickly to uh, to uh, our colleague from from headquarters in UNDP, um, uh, George. Uh, so basically, uh, George, here in Cambodia, we have um, the three do's and the three don'ts to 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 contain the spread of the spread of COVID nineteen. I mean, the three do's is wear a mask, wash your hands, and maintain social social distance. And the three don'ts is avoid confined spaces, uh, avoid the crowded spaces, and and avoid touching each other. Uh, from a global perspective. In terms of policy recommendations, what would be the best practices in, and, and the lessons learned? Uh, basically, what would be the three do's and the three don'ts for socioeconomic recovery? Thank you so much, Ivan, and greetings from New York City from, for everyone. I'm delighted to join you. Uh, I think that's a great question. Uh, what are the do's, what are the don'ts? Maybe I can think of a couple of do's. One is something that's been mentioned earlier, which is, to use all available policy tools to avoid long lasting social or economic scarring. And I think what we've seen around the world is usually two types of strategies. One that focuses on households, meaning cash transfers, social assistance, social insurance, thinking about the social protection system, and also about the tools of the future. What are we going to use in terms of digital administrative registries and how we can track youth, women, or workers in certain sectors or regions of the country in the future. So I think the household-based strategy is one. And the second one is micro, small, medium enterprise, and what it means to sustain the supply chains of today. And that includes, of course, training, retraining, including pr programming, reprogramming, and restructuring of debt in some instances. Um, I can think of a, a second do, I think, is to think about the future, to scope the horizon for new and better opportunities. I know that uh, paradoxically, some of the lockdowns and the supply chain issues that we've seen over the past few months will create opportunities for export diversification for Cambodia, perhaps green pockets in the tourism sector, perhaps digital pockets of growth in the service sectors. And, and I think we can also start to rethink that relationship between the productive system and the social protection uh, system. Now, in terms of the don'ts, uh, I think also has been mentioned, we, we need to try to distinguish temporary shocks from structural issues. So inflation, for example, is mostly temporary right now and should hopefully not lead to, to monetary tightening or they could, they could raise interest rates. Uh, but structural issues like female labor participation, like gender pay gaps, those are structural issues that have been worsened by the crisis. So I think there'll, there'll be a, a, an important uh, agenda for the future. And then finally, I think something that's on all of our minds is that we, we cannot return to 2019. So that's the last don't. Uh, this is a new world. So we have to think with ambition uh, and learn all of the lessons, the good, the bad, and the ugly that we've learned around the world. So. Uh, over to you, Ivan, uh, for more reflections. Thank you, George. Uh, as always, you, you're very insightful. Uh, I like the idea of do not return to 20, 2019. Uh, I, I think it's, that's the spirit precisely of, uh, of uh, building forward better. You know? uh, uh, thank you so much. I think, uh, I, I think this gives us also a good framework. So we still have a, a couple of minutes. Perhaps we can go uh, quickly through another round. Uh, just uh, I, I would ask uh, the panel to go quickly on on, on some of the uh, the answers. Uh, um, perhaps I can start with the uh, uh, Solin. Uh, okay, o Oxfam is uh, one of the most important and long-standing NGOs in Cambodia with impressive work, especially on vulnerable groups. And one of the principles of uh, this. Sustainable development goals is leaving no one behind. Uh, so, what would be your informed opinion regarding the implementation of this principle in the recovery plan that 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 uh, was presented to, uh, just before? In other words, who are the groups to prioritize? Uh, this is a question that that Pauline uh, uh, also mentioned in terms of women, 
But then the, the ambassador in the opening remarks also mentioning the informal workers, migrants, etc. So what, what would be your take on that, uh, sorry? Sure, thank you, Ivan. I, I really like to be on what Her Excellency Karina Rin have said, which is really a music to my ears. Uh, oh, we don't we have here. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear us clearly. Oh, excellent. Um, I was just saying that I wanted to build on uh, what Her Excellency Karina Rin have said already, which is really uh, a music to my ears. Uh, we don't have much of choice, right? But prioritizing the most vulnerable groups. And I wanted to stress that it is equally important that we looked at this from, from both vulnerability and intersectionality lens. Uh, so who are the vulnerable groups? Pregnant women and children, women and girls facing abuses and sexual exploitation, people with disability, a homeless person, elderly people, uh, ethnic minorities, especially indigenous people, uh, migrant workers, especially the returnees, and informal workers. And maybe uh, let me explain what I mean by intersectionality. So imagine a lesbian girl with mental disability from a discriminated ethnic group in rural area of Cambodia. I know that I, I'm offering an angle uh, of vulnerability, sets of vulnerability that uh, we should contend with. And I know I picked the most challenging layers of, of vulnerability here to exemplify what I mean by intersectionality. But to be honest with you, personally, I can't imagine what it is like to live the life of this woman for one hour in Cambodia, because it is very difficult for me uh, to, to overcome my, my biases uh, because of my privileges of being an educated woman from a, a Khmer ethnic group that is the dominant uh, privileged ethnic group in this country. And I can go on, you know, in terms of what I mean uh, by this, uh, uh, to give you other example of what I mean by uh, uh, why we need to uh, look at all of this also from intersectionality lenses. Uh, but you got the point, Ivan. Um, so I believe that an inclusive and equitable recovery investment that is pro-poor, pro-vulnerable groups, pro-women and girls uh, is the only way toward uh, sustainable recovery. Others have mentioned it in a different way, but I think we, we speak uh, almost the same language here. The final point I want to mention is, we know that 87.5% uh, of Cambodia economy is informal. So there is no debate about how important it is to not just protect but create an enabling, enabling environment for them to thrive. You know, when the Minister of Planning uh, gave a warning that 6.1 million informal workers are at risk of losing their, their livelihood altogether if this pandemic persists, and we can see the pandemic is persisting, uh, it scares me. But I am very optimistic that Cambodia knows full well what needed to be done to avert uh, uh, us from further uh, economic downturn. And the answer to this, I believe, uh, echoing what everyone has said already, is an inclusive and equitable social protection system. And it is the best investment for Cambodia's future. And, and I don't think it's just protecting Cambodia, but more importantly, it will help Cambodia reach its ambition of becoming a middle income uh, uh, status country. Uh, and avoid Cambodia from being trapped in its current status of being a low mid to income uh, country, something that we've seen uh, uh, in a lot of nations of continue to be uh, trapped by this. Uh, now that I still have the mic, Ivan, allow me very one quick point before I uh, uh, hand over to you. I hope also uh, countries that are key partners of the royal government would look into opportunities to share their IMF special drawing rights that was allocated especially for this COVID-19 economic recovery. Uh, I hope they will share uh, that SDO with Cambodia if they don't need it, because this is time to show solidarity. Thank you, everyone.
Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. This is a very interesting uh, proposition, the one you are making uh, last uh, last second. Uh, uh, OK, uh, because we are running out of time, let me go with uh, George. Uh, George, so you, you, you are the chief economist of the Policy Bureau in, in UNDP at global level. So what are the world's and, and the regional's perspectives for economic recovery in this and the next year? And is there anything that we need to be aware of or pay a, a special attention to? Any specific advice for Cambodia? Well, thank you so much, Ivan. I think, uh, I think six months ago, the, the picture was rosier and we, we all thought that there was going to be a, a quicker return to, 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 to normal, if you will, in the global economy. But over the past six months, we've seen that disappear with a with the Delta variant affecting supply chains, ex, uh, affecting logistical uh, issues, and also starting to to create some pockets of inflation in different parts of the world. Uh, that that sequence is leading to to reactions by policymakers. So we've seen already in a num number of countries: South Korea, Vietnam, Mexico, Brazil, increases in interest rates in in their own uh, in their own uh, currencies, which is increasing the, the, the debt denominated in, in domestic currency. So what we're seeing is a spiral that we would like to avoid over the next few months. Now, this doesn't mean that we're reversing, but it does mean that there are risks, there's uncertainty, uh, and that's gonna be with us for a while. We hope that we don't get the worst scenario, which is lower than expected growth and higher than expected inflation, the stagflation sort of scenario, because that would look uh, pretty bad for most of uh, countries who are, that are export oriented and linked to, to global supply chains. Now, coming back to Cambodia, I think the, the important thing is that the country has very strong fundamentals, um, a very high rate of vaccination right now, low levels of debt, meaning that ha it has some fiscal space actually uh, to sustain social protection over the next few months and also support micro and small enterprise. Um, we know that there's going to be new opportunities for growth also, and to think beyond growth into some of the issues that we've touched before on vulnerability, poverty, inequality, and thinking about the long-term uh, direction of, of, of development. So I, I don't have much to say on the specifics. I think you are the experts, you, 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 you know much better than I do, but I do see a little bit of uncertainty, and this is something that we'll be battling with over the next few months, uh, definitely. Thank you. So thank you, thank you so much, George. Actually, it's good to hear that uh, because we we actually consider that there's a fiscal space here in Cambodia and that the fundamentals are strong. So it's good to hear also from from your point of view. And and thank you for the advice. We we will uh, actually pay attention to interest rates and inflation. Uh, so uh, let's finalize this round of uh, the panel discussion with a very brief intervention from uh, from Kru uh, So it's clear that the government will have a very important role in accelerating the, the economic recovery. If, uh, actually, in your previous intervention, you already started to give us some of the elements um, of, uh, of the government intervention. But then uh, basically, in, in terms of the additional resources, and this fiscal space that, that uh, George commented, for example, uh, very briefly, what are the plans of the Ministry of Economy and Finance to get additional resources? What, what would be the measures? Thank you. Thank you so much, Eva. Second question. I think it's time to show this also to the meeting as well as the public. Um, actually, uh, the concern over the fiscal space is very wide, given the fact that I have been also mentioning the uh, challenges that our spending keep increasing, while the revenue is anticipated to be short for. And in order to support the businesses as well as um, uh, to accelerate 
the boosting the economic and social uh, economic, social and economic activity uh, during the uh, post pandemic actions to balancing you know this kind of uh, short-term response as well as the resources uh, measures of activity that we have uh, actually aligned with what um, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, it's, it's aligned to what our speaker previously mentioned that we have sort of like trying to rationalizing, you know, um, uh, the existing or current tax system with, in order. Sorry, Ooh, I think uh, I cannot hear, but I think we perhaps we lost uh, Krominarin. Uh, uh, Ivan, uh, there is a question from Excellency Boras to Excellency Tepi. Uh, you may want to invite to speak. Hello. Um, do you hear me back, Dr. Ivan? Yes, yes, we can hear you. I'm, I'm sorry, I really need to turn off the camera because the internet is not really stable, so it cut a long way. So just straight to the question, uh, we have thought of a few options in our financing source. One is to actually um, uh, review on the tax system as a whole in order to uh, see the room where revenue can be uh, improved Without jeopardizing the uh, the you know the boosting of the economic and social activity back on track, so we are now studying on a few uh, tax like uh, excise tax like uh, Ms. Solon mentioned about uh, increasing the sin tax in order to improve equality equity among the taxpayer. We also um, uh, study on the personal income tax as well as you know study the tax system reform as a whole I, like i mentioned there could be also other possible option by issuing the government bond sometime next year to be another financing source for the other uh, priority that the government would pursue it uh, or was doing so and i do agree on the uh, what mentioned by uh, miss um, Pauline from the beginning that we also considering on the green financing uh, that we are seeking from all the development partner, given the fact that we are now um, actually uh, working hard in supporting and launching the national economy efficiency policy and other green initiatives. So we hope that this other financing source would be also a part. And to emphasize a little bit on what Mr. Lin just mentioned about the SDR, that could be another financing source for Cambodia from the SDR distribution by the IMF, but we are still working on that. And uh, we, we of course have sought this as another option. So uh, this kind of financing source option could be uh, already, has already been mentioned in our policy agenda. But I want to just a little bit emphasize on the, uh, you know, the improved efficiency of the expenditure side a bit. Besides improving the revenue source itself, we have to be more, you know, um, uh, stringent in terms of rationalizing unnecessary spending, and only to get to, to the, the 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 really necessary spending, for example, like the, the health uh, purpose as well as mitigating the COVID nineteen. And from this, uh, we actually well highlighted in our upcoming medium term fiscal framework 2023-2025 on identifying the the policy fiscal stand, the fiscal policy stand, the fiscal anchor, as well as priority for the sector policy. So here just to highlight a bit on the balancing between short-term support and the long-term fiscal sustainability that we have carefully sought and taken into action. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Ivan. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, we have a follow-up question uh, from Excellency Borut. Uh, uh, can can we open the microphone for Excellency? All right. Please, Excellency, go ahead with your question. Thank you, Ivan, and uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, yeah, I don't want to take too much time, but I 
I feel that uh, there's such a rich discussion here already in place. And uh, my question uh, would be directed to C. T. Buren. Uh, as a, as a, as a, right now, I am a Secretary of State Office of Social Affairs, and we see this uh, this presentation or this finding that the stimulus package that was put together uh, by the MEF has made such a growth, and it makes so much impact. If you compare the impact, is you're talking about so much almost a, a one a 0 0.4 percent of GDP growth alone. So, but what happened right now, we're actually in the middle of, of planning up the, to maybe to take pressure off the fiscal space uh, because the, the, the amount of money that invested is heavily burdened the fiscal space where we may not be able to sustain it. But my question is, can we, can we is MEM, share Finance, see this investment as a long-term project? Because the, the 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 growth rate that we are getting this is is insurmountable. It's it's, it's something is is it's it, you know before we're talking about investment in, in infrastructure as a, it's also an economic growth uh, tool, but right now we're actually seeing social protection is a tool for economic growth. Also, are we able to move budget from uh, infrastructure or uh, economic sector to social protection sector? Because as I'm seeing, as soon as COVID-19 come, uh, 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 maybe lo uh, level down, the, in the 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 investment, the budget investment might not be there as as much as now. But this evidence really showed that this could actually make a big impact. So so that's uh, the question that uh, can we sustain this type of investment in the long term for this Thank you. Thank you, uh, I, I think this this question is addressed to uh, Excellency Tep Yurin. Uh, would you like to take the floor, Excellency, to, to answer? Yes, uh, thank you, Juan. Uh, I think is a this is a very very important questions. But uh, I I just uh, would like to uh, to note that. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, can hear you. Yes. Uh, there is, a, from the budget perspective, there is always a need uh, uh, invest in the infrastructure, invest in the healthcare, invest in the education, in digital economy, and uh, as an uh, as an uh, from the I'm not uh, defending the Minister of Economy and Finance, but I'm just uh, trying to uh raise the point that we need to balance uh uh in which uh, area our scare resources needs to be uh put uh, as a priority i i i i share the view that uh, the social protection is a is is a very important uh, uh area that we need to invest and i also noted in my uh, in my opening remark that uh, uh i i i think that it should be sustainable uh, and uh, it should be in the long term. And the, in the long term, the social protection needs to be modernized, needs to be focused, um, needs to be more dynamic, not only focus on the maybe structural poor, but uh, uh, as mentioned by uh, many speakers, maybe uh, more uh, targeted uh, on the gender, on the those that uh, uh, may be uh, uh, not uh, poor right now, but uh, could be poor uh, in the future uh, due to the shocks. But our uh, but our system probably not uh, dynamic enough to capture all those uh, uh, poor because as uh, as uh, 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 our uh, panelists mentioned that uh, the 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 informal economy is uh, is very big and uh, in order for the social protection to be uh, maybe to work well probably uh, we need to uh, uh, try to uh, maybe reduce the informal economy that's why the the, the registration and uh, of the smes uh, and uh, making sure that uh, that uh, those informal economies could be in the formal economy uh, would be uh, an important but i i i would agree that uh, we need to uh, uh, look at our fiscal space whether we can sustain 
uh, the social protection uh, uh, system that we are having right now uh, in the future going forward. Thank you. I hope I answered the uh, question by uh, by his excellency, by his excellency uh, Bora. Yeah, yeah, Bora. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Rani, that, now that you have been assisting uh, this, uh, uh, the questions from the audience, uh, do we have another uh, question that we should uh, take? Or, uh, sorry, colleagues, because, uh, and Excellencies, we are delayed in our program. We should have finished a uh, few minutes ago. Uh, perhaps we can move to the, um, to the closing remarks. And if we have uh, still outstanding uh, questions, in the chat box or in, in the Q&A panel, we can uh, take them uh, uh, offline or, or, or share the, the answer to the, through email. Uh, if, if that is the case, then I will uh, just appreciate and, and thank you again to, to our uh, panelists today, uh, Solin Lim, George Gray and Kru Narin, uh, thank you very much for your intervention and your in, insightful comments. And also thank you, obviously, to Excellency Tepi Yudin and Excellency Worf for, for the question and the, and the answer. So uh, over to uh, Sonali for closing remarks. Thank you, uh, Ivan. Shimriapsu, good morning. Excellency Teb Fiorin, Under Secretary of State, Ministry of Economy and Finance, Ms. Pauline Thamesis, UN Resident Coordinator to Cambodia, Mr. Andreas Zubrook, Deputy Ambassador, Australian Embassy in Cambodia, Ambassadors, distinguished members of our panel, distinguished re representatives from the government, non government, and private sectors, and development partners, Excellencies and colleagues. It is my pleasure to close this launch following the rich analytical opening remarks, presentations and discussion on the socioeconomic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic in Cambodia and the Royal government's response measures. First, I would like to extend my gratitude to excellencies and colleagues from government institutions, development partners, civil society, private sector, UN agencies and other stakeholders who are participating in this launch. In particular, I wish to convey our appreciation to the Ministry of Economy and Finance, with whom we have a close collaboration, and especially His Excellency Teb Fiorin for joining us today. In addition to Ms. Pauline Thamesis, UN Resident Coordinator to Cambodia, and Mr. Andreas Zabrook, Deputy Ambassador, Australian Embassy. We also value the contributions of Ms. Krui Narin, Ms. Lynn Solin and Dr. George Gray Molina, who provided valuable analysis and insights. Excellencies and colleagues, based on the analysis presented by Dr. Basrul Konter and the policy brief by the economic team of the UNDP and UN Resident Coordinator's Office, led by Dr. Ivan Gonzalez de Elba, we have come to the projections that GDP growth will move up to the positive zone and that unemployment, consumption, and poverty rates will improve considerably. Not only do these projections give us hope, but they present significant opportunities to lay a strong foundation for an inclusive, green, and resilient economy through policy options for recovery and building forward better. As many of us know, the Royal Government of Cambodia rapidly rolled out cash transfers to around 700,000 households since the start of the pandemic. This level of social protection was much needed for the most vulnerable populations and those hit hard by the pandemic. Ms. Pauline Thomasis highlighted in her welcome remarks that this was an unprecedented achievement, demonstrating how social protection is not a cost, but an investment in people that helps create a more dynamic, inclusive and robust economy. UNDP has been working in collaboration with other UN agencies and development partners in our journey with the Royal Government of Cambodia to build a stronger social protection system. For example, with the Government of Australia last year, we were able to support the Ministry of Planning with digitization, which facilitated the quick registration of families that had recently fallen into poverty. Along with the World Bank and GIZ, we are supporting the Ministry of Planning 
to recalibrate the ID4 system to increase the position of targeting of poor and vulnerable households. We are appreciative of the government of Australia's recent top up of 3.1 million US dollars through our joint resilience fund for additional technical assistance for the government's economic recovery plan for 2021 to 2023 in line with the 2030 sustainable development agenda. In partnership with the Royal Government, we are also piloting a graduation based social protection program funded by the Russian Federation, which is testing combined livelihoods and social protection measures that seek to address both short term vulnerabilities and boost long term recovery and resilience for households to move out of poverty. Lessons could later be integrated into the national social protection policy framework providing a more impactful alternative for the COVID-19 cash transfer program. While we continue to deal with the significant challenges presented by COVID-19, the projections today indicate that Cambodia's economy is on a good path for social and economic recovery. Alongside Cambodia has significant opportunities to take advantage of emerging green economies and value chains regionally and across the globe, accelerated by the fallout of the pandemic and the existential threat of climate change. We note that greening economic recovery is an important agenda reflected in the Royal Government's economic recovery plan. As His Excellency Thepiorin mentioned in his opening remarks, Amidst the disruptions, the Royal Government believes the fallout of the pandemic is also an opportunity for transformation. Along with our partners, UNDP is expanding our portfolios to support green recovery. We are supporting the Royal Government to broaden development financing sources through innovative financing tools and mechanisms. This includes the feasibility for issuance of commercial bonds and SDG or green bonds in addition to our work with other UN agencies on SDG investor maps. Permit me to conclude by extending again our deepest appreciation to the Ministry of Economy and Finance, as well as other government agencies, the non-government and private sectors, development partners and other actors for your participation in this launch today. Through our collaboration, we believe that Cambodia can increase its capacity to overcome the pandemic and other development challenges. Excellencies, distinguished panelists and colleagues, I would like to close this launch of the policy brief on the 2021 COVID-19 economic and social impact assessment in Cambodia by wishing everyone good health and well-being during these challenging times. Thank you. Thank you, Sonali. Thank you, Sonali and uh, our colleagues for uh, joining us uh, in this event today. And also our gratitude and appreciation to our speakers and panelists. Um, so uh, as uh, mentioned in the chat box, uh, we will be sending the PowerPoint presentation uh, that is used in this event and the policy brief to all registered participants by email. And for the policy brief, we will also be making it available for public consumption on our website. Um, thank you and a very good day uh, to all of you. Thank you.